Baraka the Yahweh, Baraka the Yahweh Shai, all praises and in glory, be into Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well. Peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. You Akim and few Akwatim that believe in Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole body, your whole spirit, your whole everything. And who are waiting for these last and these final prophecies to happen in the earth. And the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who's coming back to redeem the elect. All right. Those that worship and believe in him. Watching this video from beloved apostle and elder Gabar on our daily edification for. And the title of the video is Sowing Discord, Deacon Haka. All right. That's not a good look. In which um, in the video, he's basically trying to pin, you know, Apostle Tahar and Apostle Gabar, you know, and the rest of the brethren, you know, within Great Millstone against Apostle Gabar, you know, because of, of a statement that he saw within the video that Apostle Gabar did that they totally took out of context. And I didn't actually see the video that Apostle Gabar did, but I heard within, you know, the, the, the video that Apostle Gabar played, you know, uh, the statement that Deacon Haka played of what the Apostle Gabar was saying. And right off the bat, you know, I understood exactly where Apostle Gabar was coming from. And basically what he was saying is that all of the things that were set up for Yahweh to do when he came the first time that was spoken about within the Old Testament, he fulfilled all of those prophecies. See, there's prophecies within the Old Testament concerning the return of Yahweh all right, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. But what Apostle Gabar was mentioning is that Yahweh Shai fulfilled all of the ones that he was supposed to fulfill when he came the first time. And anyone with, with a spiritual ear will be able to understand and discern that. But the thing is, you don't believe in Yahweh Shai. You don't worship Yahweh Shai. You say that you believe in Yahweh Shai, but Yahweh Shai said this. Matter of fact, let me go to first John 4 and 15 first. It says, And whosoever shall confess that Yahweh Shai is the son of the most high, whose name is Yahweh, Yahweh dwelleth in him, and he in Yahweh. Now, when you look up the word uh for confess within the Greek, the word there is homologia. And it says to say the same thing as another, an example to agree with, all right, to assent, and also to profess oneself the worshiper of one. All right, so you don't you don't believe in Yahweh Shai. All right, you 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 haven't truly confessed Yahweh Shai. Now, when you go into the book of John, the 14th chapter, verse 23. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. All right, see, you don't you don't uh, uh, keep the sayings of Yahweh Shai. All right, so you don't truly believe in Yahweh Shai. Just to make that statement. Now, in regards to sowing discord, you know, what does the scriptures have to say about that? All right, because that's completely wicked. All right, what you're doing is wicked. All right, and you're doing it basically simply because you're being reproved on something that you're going off on. But your pride is standing in the way. All right, instead of sitting back and examining, you know, yourself, you know, you, 
Alizar and the things that you're saying over at the Sakari that are completely wrong. All right, you're pushing that notion that you could be saved by the law. You can't be saved by the law alone. You 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 uh, 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 lied and said that we we say over here at Great Millstone. All right, uh, um, basically that you don't need the law. All right, you 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 uh, uh, slandered us. You said that we're we're like Christians. All right, you're saying all kind of things. And and why are you saying that? You're saying it in retaliation of beginning with the apostles and elders. You are getting got on for the things that you are saying that are false. All right, you can't keep the law perfectly. And therefore, you need Yahawashai. What's your what's your gripe against Yahawashai? What do you have against him? All right. Do you know that he came to save your ass for where you come short of keeping the law? So the book of Proverbs 16 and 28 says a four man so of strife and a whisperer separate of chief friends. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to separate chief friends. All right, by way of sowing discord, by way of trying to pin one against another. And there's plenty of people that have tried that in the past. You know, and, and um, although the apostle mentioned that within his video, you know, I was sitting back before he said that. And I said, well, damn, look at all of the people in times past that had come against Great Millstone. And where are they now? Where are they now? All right, you're going to be grinded out. The book of Sirach 28 and 9, a sinful man disquitted friends and maketh debate among them that be at peace. So by way of this scripture, you are a sinful man. All right, for someone that prides himself on keeping the law perfectly. All right, you have not keep, kept the law perfectly. All right, you're going off. Hey, the scripture says there's a law that says uh, 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 curse not the the uh, the ruler of your people. All right, when when you read the the actual law, it says curse not the gods. But but when you go into the word God, the word God goes into judges, you know, or rulers. And it's evident through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. That Yahweh Bashmi Awashai set up the apostles of Great Millstone. All right, he set up the church of Great Millstone. And that's where you learned the truth from. You know, the apostles taught you. The book of uh, James 3 and 14. It says, But if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. All right, you're lying against the truth. All right, you're saying that you have to keep the law 100%. And there's no one upon the planet Earth that can do that. And that's the reason that we need Yahawashai. See, Yahawashai is our grace. He's our mercy. He's our, he's our, our atonement. He's our propitiation. All right, he, he, he activates for us where we come short of keeping the law if we believe and him and worship him. All right, but you are totally against Yahweh Shai and your actions and your deeds and your ways, which shows that you haven't fully confessed Yahweh Shai. All right, you think that you could be saved through your righteousness. All right, you boast of your of your keeping of the law when your when your asses can't even keep it perfectly. All right, there's so many things that you break in the law, all right, daily. But what, whatever you know concerning the law, you learned it from the apostles and elders. James 3 and 15, all right, which I'm which, um, reading on, it says, This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envyings and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So what you're doing is an evil work. All right, but you're thinking that you're in the spirit. You ain't got the spirit. 
All right, you don't truly believe in Yahweh Shai. You haven't truly confessed him, and you're not keeping his saints. All right, what did Yahweh Shai say? Here's, a, here's, here's an example, because you were one an ex example, right? The book of John 14 and 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. All right, so you don't truly believe in Yahweh Shai, man. All right, although you say with your mouth that you confess him. All right, but it goes far beyond just saying his name. All right, do you keep his sayings? Do you believe in him as the scripture has said? All right, do you believe that he came in the volume of the book? All right, do you believe that it's written of him? All right, here it is. You're sitting up here, you know, uh, 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 trying to defend all right, uh, 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 certain things out of the scriptures when you yourself don't even truly believe in Yahweh Shai, man, according to what the scriptures say. Because if you did, then you understand his position and how he's the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. All right, how, you know, he stands, you know, for, for, for uh, us to be a mediator all right, to, to uh, uh, be the high priest, the chief high priest. Making atonement for our sins. All right, at the right hand of the heavenly father. But yet you call, you know, the head of your church, the, the, the chief priest. All right, he's trying to stand in the position of Yahweh Shai by calling himself the chief priest. Why don't you get on him and tell him to stop calling himself that? All right, how he's trying to push the Levitical uh, uh, priesthood and trying to move Yahweh Shai out of his position. All right, when the scripture says that Yahweh Shai, you, you know, that there's, a, that there's a new priesthood. The book of uh, Hebrews, the seventh chapter, verse one. For this Melchizedek, king of, of Salem, priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being, by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. All right, which Melchizedek was Yahweh Shai. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but may like unto the son of Yahweh abideth a priest continually, which means that he's a priest forever. All right, which is Yahweh Shai. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoil. And verily, and verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to, to take types of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loans of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from, uh, from them receive types of Abraham and bless him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive types, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may uh, so say, Levi also who received types paved types in Abraham, for he was yet in the loans of his father when Melchizedek met him. Which means that he was in a in the ball sack of him, man. They were in the in the in the in the, in the, in the boss, the nuts of him. Reading on, it says, if their if if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, all right, for under it the people received the law, what further need was was there that another priest arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? All right, but you're saying that the that the Levitical priesthood is 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 the priesthood that you're supposed to go by, right? 
So, so if that's the case, you're, you're sitting in this video trying to defend Yahawashai, but yet you don't even stand for the priesthood of Yahawashai in regards to being Melchizedek, which is hypocrisy, man. All right, you are a bunch of hypocrites. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also all right, of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And if and, and it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. All right, so after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. And who is that speaking of? That's speaking of Yahawashai. The book of Psalms 110 and 4. All right, Yahweh have sworn and will not repent that thou art a priest, or Salakia, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Yahweh have sworn and will not repent thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So you haven't truly confessed this. You haven't truly believed this. Because if so, all right, you would get on my mans about being the chief high priest or calling himself the chief high priest. All right, Yahweh Shai is the chief high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And then also, you will understand that there was a change within the priesthood. All right, so Yahweh Shai have made us all priests. And when we're in the kingdom, we're going to enforce the laws. All right, the law isn't done away with is good. We try to keep the laws to the best of our ability now, but we can't keep them perfectly. So that's the reason why we need a high priest who isn't able to be touched with, 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 uh, um, who is, who, who isn't in the flesh and that will go off, that will sin. All right, because when the, when the, when the priests were making atonement, they would have to make one for themselves, then make it for the people. Yahweh Shai did that once. He did that once. So now he's in the, in the heavens and he can't be tempted in the, in, in the new body and in the heavens, sitting on the right hand side of the Most High Heavenly Father, the way that you could be tempted. So you boast yourselves on the law, all right? But you yourselves can't keep the law perfectly. Let me read this. It says, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, at the right hand shall strike through the, the, uh, the kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen, and he, he shall fill the places with dead bodies. All right, he shall wound the heads over many countries, because he's coming back to take down our enemies. All right, see, this partial of this has been fulfilled. All right, but the rest is going to be fulfilled. So what, what Apostle Gabar was saying is that all that was written concerning Yahweh to fulfill when he came the first time has been fulfilled by Yahweh And of course, of course, there's plenty of different lessons that Apostle Gabar did in which he showed, he showed all right, that Yahweh is coming back. All right, that he hasn't fulfilled everything, but that he's coming back. But you're going to take that small snippet and try to sow discord among brethren. You are a hypocrite, man. Now, there was a uh, uh, something that I was getting ready to go through. It kind of uh, go to, it kind of uh, slipped my mind. But going back to the book of James, and I'll start from the top again. James three and fourteen. But if you have bitter envyings and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth, which you have been doing, and all simply to save face, because you through your pride, don't want to seem like you're wrong. It says, um, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envious and strife is, there is confusion in, e in every evil work. But that wis but the, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated, 
full of mercy and, and good fruits, all right, without partiality and without hypocrisy, all right? But what did you display and what do you continuously display? You continuously display hypocrisy, all right? You know, trying to pin the apostles against themselves, uh, against each other, but then turn it around and saying that you love apostle to heart. You don't love apostle to heart. And you just said that because I don't know if it was last week or the week before that he said that concerning y'all first, man. All right. He said that concerning y'all first. So that's the reason why you're saying that it's not out of a sincere place. I remember, you know, uh, what, what I was going to get. And this is our Romans, uh, the second chapter, verse 22. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? Thou that uh, 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 pours idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast out of the law through breaking the law, dishonor of Yahweh. For the name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. All right, because you make your boast, you know, of, of keeping the law. But yet, you're not able to keep the law perfectly. All right? Your own leader said, said can I, can I uh, um, show me a scripture in the Bible where it says, I can't lie. All right? Well, it's clear that, that you never read Leviticus 19 and 11. All right? You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another all right but i'm sure you'll find a way to circumvent yourself around that one all right so you guys you know are, are clearly going off man you clearly going off so with that i truly hope that this lesson was edifying until the next time a shallow one